In this video, we want to take a look at geometric sequences. So a geometric sequence is similar to an arithmetic sequence. However, this time, rather than addition, we're taking a look at multiplication. So a geometric sequence has what we call a common ratio between consecutive terms. Let me just give a few examples here. Let's say we've got the terms 3, 9, 27, and 81. This here would be an example of a geometric sequence. And what we can see here is the common ratio must be 3. Let's go from term to term. We just multiply by 3. We times that by 3. 9 times by 3 would give me 27. And 27 times 3 would give me 81 there. Okay. So we said that's an example of a geometric sequence. We might also have something, say, like 4, 2, 1, 1 half, and then a quarter. Again here, this would be an example of a geometric sequence where my common ratio this time is a half. So to go from term to term here, we just multiply through by a half. So 4 times a half would give me 2, four times by a half. Same again here, if I times 2 by a half, I get 1. If I times 1 by a half, I get a half. If I times a half by a half, I get a quarter, and so on. Okay. And then finally, we, we might have another geometric sequence here, but this time we have what we call an alternating sequence. So let's say I've got 1, minus 3, positive 9, and minus 27. In this case here, my common ratio is minus 3. So I times 1 by minus 3, we times by minus 3, we get minus 3. If I then take minus 3 and multiply that by minus 3, we get positive 9. And if I take 9 here and multiply that by minus 3, we get minus 27. Okay, so like we said, this is what we call an alternating sequence. Let's just note this here. That's an alternating sequence. So the only thing left to discuss here is the formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. So again, we use this notation like we saw with an arithmetic sequence of um. But this time for a geometric sequence, my nth term is given as a r to the n minus 1. Okay, now again here a is my first term, so just like we saw with an arithmetic sequence, that's my first term. The first term, and r here represents what we call our common ratio. Okay, so r here is the common ratio. So that's everything we need there for our introduction to geometric sequences. So now let's take a look at a couple of practice questions. So if we take a look at question one here, we've got the fifth term of a geometric sequence, which is 192. We're then told that the eighth term of the same geometric sequence is 1536. So for part A here, we're asked to find the common ratio of the geometric sequence. So to answer part A here, we just need to use the formula for the nth term. So remember, un is equal to ar to the n minus 1. Okay, so the fifth term here would be u5. So u5 here, well, that's going to be equal to ar to the 5 minus 1. So that's going to be ar to the 4. Okay, but we know that this term here, the fifth term, is equal to 192. That's equal to 192. And what we're going to do now is just repeat this here with the eighth term. So u8 is equal. That's going to be ar to the n minus 1. So that's ar to the 8 minus 1, giving me ar to the 7. And that's equal to 1536. Okay. So basically, what I've got here now is just simultaneous equations. If I call this equation 1, call this equation 2. What I'm going to do now is take equation 2 and divide that by equation 1. Okay, so therefore, equation 2 divided by equation 1. So in that case, then what I'm going to get here is ar to the 7 over ar to the 4. ar to the 7 over ar to the 4. 
and that's going to be equal to 1536 over 192. So 1536 over 192. Well, if we simplify the left hand side here first, all I'm going to get here, just basic rule of indices, is r cubed. We get r cubed here, and that's going to be equal. So just put this into your calculator here. So it's going to be equal to 8. Okay. We get that r cubed is equal to 8. So in that case, if I just want r here, I just take the cube root of both sides. So in that case, then we get that r is equal to the cube root of 8, which is equal to 2. Okay. So for part a, then the common ratio of this geometric sequence r equals 2. So that's part a done. Let's take a look at part b then over here. So we're asked to find the first term in the geometric sequence. So in that case, then I just need to use either equation 1 or equation 2 here. Remember, we know the value of r, r is equal to 2. So if I just substitute that into either of those equations here, then we can just solve for a. Okay, and like I said, it doesn't matter. Um, but in this case, all I've done is I've just substituted that into equation 1. So I've got a lot of 2 to the power of 4 here. That's going to be equal to 192. So 2 to the power of 4, that's 16. So I get 16a here. That's equal to 192. So clearly, just to solve for a here, we just divide both sides by 16. So a is equal to 192 divided by 16. Again, just put this into your calculator here. What you should get for a is 12. Okay, so the first term in this geometric sequence is 12. So that's part b. And then to answer part c here, let's just clear the screen just so we've got enough room. So let's just remember the first term here. A is 12, and the common ratio here, R, is 2. So for part C then, we're asked to find the 12th term in the geometric sequence. So again, we're just using the formula here for the nth term. Okay, so remember, un equal to AR, the n minus 1. So if I want the 12th term then, that's going to be U12. And that's going to be equal to A, which is 12, multiplied by R to the n minus 1. So that's 2 to the power of 12 minus 1. So that's 2 to the power of 11. Okay. Just put this into your calculator here. And what you should get then is 24,576 there. Okay. So that's the 12th term there in that geometric sequence. And that gives us the solution to question 1. So if we take a look at one more question here then, we've got the first three terms of a geometric sequence. And they're given as 5x and x plus 10. We're told that all the terms in this geometric sequence are positive. So for part A, we're just asked to find the value of x. So to answer part A here, we need to use the fact that the common ratio is going to be equal between each term. So what I mean by that is my second term divided by my first term here must be equal to my third term divided by the second term. Okay. So x over 5 must be equal to x plus 10 over x. Okay, so all I need to do here now is solve for x here. So what I'm going to get is a quadratic equation, and we just need to solve that to find the value of x. So in other words, what I'm going to get here is x squared is equal to 5 lots of x plus 10. So obviously, if I'm going to solve this quadratic here, what I want to do is set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract this off both sides. So I'm going to get x squared minus 5 lots of x plus 10. Obviously, if you prefer, you could expand this first, but this will all be equal to 0. If I expand it now, I'm going to get x squared minus 5x. And then minus 5 times 10 is giving me minus 50. That's all equal to 0. So what we're going to hope for here is that this will factorize. And in this case, it does factorize. What I get here is x minus 10 multiplied by x plus 5. And that's all equal to zero. Okay. Now, this, this here says find the value of x. So that would signal that there's only one solution here for x. Now, obviously, when I factorize this, what we're going to get here is two solutions. However, we're told that all the terms in this geometric sequence are positive. So if I just take my two solutions, say I get x equals 10, x equals 10, and x equals minus 5. 
Okay. However, if x equal to minus 5 here, it causes a little bit of an issue because that would signal that my second term here would be negative. Well, that would contradict this statement here. Okay. Well, all the terms in this geometric sequence are positive. So in that case, we don't intake, don't take, or don't include that solution there. In other words, x must be equal to 10. Okay. So for the value of x, x equals 10. And then we move on to part b here, where I find the value of the 10th term. So again, just use the formula for the m term. Un is equal to ar to the m minus 1. So we can actually find the value of a here, my first term. That's already given. That's 5. So we didn't actually need to find it. It's just given. That's 5. And my common ratio here, we just think about these terms. So my first term is 5. My second term here is x, which we know is 10. So I get 5, 10. And my third term here is x plus 10. So that's 10 plus 10, giving me 20. So clearly what I can see here is we're doubling each time. In other words, we're times in by 2. Okay, times by 2. Do the same here, times by 2. So r is equal to 2. And if we want the 10th term, then n would be equal to 10. So for the 10th term, u10, that's going to be equal to a, which is 5. We times that by r to the n minus 1, so that's 2. The power of 10 minus 1, so that's to the power of 9. And from here, you don't need to do anything fancy. Just put this into your calculator. But what you should find here is you get 2,560 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to question 2. That brings us to the end of this video on geometric sequences. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at geometric series.